Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Once upon a time, Germany committed an act of such contemptible evil that the world still remembers them for it. To the shame of a modern German nation and its people, they asked Piranha Bytes, popular German RPG developer, to make the same game for over 20 years. For nearly two decades, Piranha Bytes has been releasing Gothic 2 under different titles, and the German population is none the wiser. Oh, it loaded. This looks good. Press any button to continue. What a terribly coded game. Elix is the latest copy of Gothic 2. The story takes place in the world of Magalan, a modernized planet much like ours, which got hit by a comet containing magic crystals called Elix. Most people die off. The lucky ones who survive become mindless mutants tainted by Elix, while the unlucky ones become Germans. The Germans split into four different factions. The Albs, who consume Elix to become more and more autistic, and thus more powerful. The Berserkers, who are like the German version of Amish people, and refuse to use Elix technology, but use Elix to turn into mana, which doesn't count. The Clerics, who are just religious fanatics. And the Outlaws, who are ANCAP as fuck, hate organized government, and hate roads even more. You play as Jax. A man gifted with a unique power. He can jump higher than any white person ever recorded in history. For this reason, the other Albs get jealous of him and shoot down his plane. Then your manlet brother attempts to assassinate you, but can't aim very well because the gun is designed for adult fingers and not children. So you survive and fall down the cliff. When you wake up, the elix is gone from your system and you're forced to experience human emotions for the first time such as anger at the clunky control scheme, and confusion at the strange texture popping, delayed or absent sound effects, and poor and tear voice acting. Stranded among former enemies, Jax has to forge alliances and build trust with the other factions to find out why his allies tried to kill him, and beat the final antagonist of his game, the combat system. While Jax can jump very high for a caucasoid, helped even more so by his trusty jetpack, this won't save you from Elix's atrocious combat. The system is fairly straightforward. Jax attacks through a relentless combination of quick and strong attacks to string combos together. <coughs> <coughs> So what could possibly go wrong? Everything. Piranha Bytes is a developer that's infamous for designing terrible combat, so don't be surprised. In fact, if you play by the rules set by the developer, you will die. Instead, you need to do what all sensible people do with Piranha Bytes RPGs. You abuse the system as much as possible. In Gothic 2, probably millions of people fell for the combat meme. They didn't know you could just spend a few hundred gold in the first town to buy a scroll to transform into a black raptor, and rampage through the entire first map, skipping virtually the first ten levels of bullshit. Piranha Bites crams down your throat. You need to approach this game in the same way. The stamina bar is a great feature, and adds a lot to the game. There's nothing more satisfying than watching a green bar deplete and replenish in the top left of my screen as I wait for my cerebral palsy stricken character to accumulate enough energy for his paralyzed muscles to spring into motion. In fact, the stamina bar serves no purpose except to cause you suffering. This is because only humans have stamina. Monsters and wildlife follow no such system and can attack without restriction. Even better, if you're hit while your stamina is recovering, it interrupts the recovery. This leads to a fun, innovative system built around stun-locking someone into a coma. The combat almost appears to be intentionally designed bad. You couldn't make it any worse unless you tried very hard. Maybe give a character tank controls instead. Oh, and give him a warning every time his stamina and health gets low, which will be every few seconds. Your health is low. Do you have any potions or food? None of this matters when you play the game the real way it's meant to be played. The way the developers didn't intend. You recruit Duras and suck him off so he aggros all the monsters. Then, while he's holding their attention and is absolutely immune to damage, you just spam grenades and ranged attacks. Then you cheese through the entire game. And why would I not cheese through the entire game? Why would I not abuse the fact that attacks stunlock enemies by simply running through half of a fucking game map, reaching the cleric base, and buying a flamethrower? Because, fun fact, 
You need almost no stats to weld the best gun in the game, which can spit out fireballs that stun lock and knock over everything they hit in a wide radius, so you can safely kill anything in the game without them even having the chance to defend themselves. And why would I not abuse the fact that crafting recipes are broken? When I can go to a trader in the outlaw town and buy infinite amounts of electronic scrap and iron ore, convert these into mental energy reserves, which is magic ammunition used by the clerics, and upgrade these in a one-to-one -one ratio into higher tier copies of mental energy reserves that sell for threefold more than the cost of my base ingredients, leading me to have infinite amounts of money, or Deutschmarks as they're called in-game. Germans will likely defend and applaud the game. Germans with names like Jürgen, Hans, and Ahmed will state that there's nothing wrong with the game, and it's designed for real hardcore RPG players like themselves. Besides, it reminds them of real-life Germany, where walking outside in Berlin will result in your immediate stabbing. Thankfully for the Germans, you can't quickload in real life. I say you shouldn't trust their opinions. A country whose highest grossing game titles are farming, forklift, and bus driving simulators lack the credibility to make any judgments on what's good. To the typical German gamer, Arbeit macht frei, and they cannot separate work from leisure. Modern copies of Farming Simulator are electronically linked to real-life driverless farms in Germany, tricking the average German male into supporting the Eurozone economy without pay. The grains produced from such operations are so cheap and plentiful that the EU can afford to airlift them by the metric ton and drop them directly on sub-Saharan African villages, instantly drowning the native population in a river of wheat. World construction and level design is stellar, and probably the strongest feature of Elix. Every crevice, nuke, and cranny has been clearly handcrafted and stuffed with items, gear, and consumables for you to plunder, together with many dangers. The voice acting can be patchy at times with the English dub, but the quests are very well done and offer many solutions to tackle them. The decisions you make influence the opinions and actions of characters, companions, and factions throughout the world, and steer the course of the story toward one of the major groups and their ideology for how Magalan should be run. The companions you bring with you also have their own interactions with NPCs, and their presence alone can change the outcome of missions you're given. Just be aware their AI is garbage. Ray just stood still while I was getting mauled by a horde of animals, and doesn't even intervene in fights unless you've already won. Durus is less garbage because his AI is more aggressive, but is still prone to standing still like a tart, or switching from his melee weapon to his bow in melee range. I didn't have a chance to test out Arx as a companion, since my parents first forbid me from playing with skinheads, so I can't comment on his AI. Also, while the graphics are absolutely great, one of the features I appreciated the most was how well the day-night cycles were done, and the lighting differences between them. During evenings in the game, it might even be so damn dark, you can't see fucking anything. Sort of signaling you to go to bed, or camp, until visibility improves. But close to the evening is when old lights switch on for different ruined apartment blocks and buildings. Bioluminescent plants provide ambient glow to orient yourself, and the whole game actually takes on a completely different color palette, especially around the different faction encampments. That's really nice. I think the game can be described as a very solid open-world RPG, if you give it the chance, with some questionable design choices that, if you work around, leaves you with a very enjoyable experience that encourages replayability. With all that said, there's technical issues, bugs, and glitches out the ass for this release. My advice? Go wait a few months. Let the people who bought it full price playtest it for you and suffer. Then come back and buy it for a fraction of the price when the product improves. Elix follows the common philosophy in this business. In the gaming industry, the customer is always wrong and deserves to be beaten and robbed in a seedy alleyway. So I give this game a thinking emoji out of 10. Life is a prison. And we all serve our time. My experience with Elix can be compared to my recent experience with ordering donor kebab. I was tired and hungry. I had a long shift at the labs. I needed nourishment. The sexually repressed and frustrated woman at the counter took advantage of my weakness, handing me the greasiest and sloppiest donor ever conceived. I ate it, devoured it with gusto, and was filled with temporary, short-term bliss. Little did I know, I was also filled with food poisoning, and the catalyst for the mega shits my ass would experience for the next three days. While in pain I fought, who could be responsible for this? Who could condone such atrocities? I knew it. I knew it. 
Angela, Merkel, you did this. You made me shit my guts out for three days straight. You fucking whore. I love the nation of Germany. Basinger. Bing Bing One Up Wahoo. Stay tuned for more wacky adventures from Seth Sintok. Thank you to all my generous patrons, you are wonderful. Remember to like and subscribe for an extra molecule of oxygen. Yabba dabba doo.